Okay, so this is what your throttle will look like for the cable setup. Um, and I'll show you how we have to reassemble it for the drive-by-wire. So the first thing we need to do is we don't need the little stop anymore. So we'll take that one out. We can remove the main lever. Okay, now this little spacer we will use as a jig for setting the closed position. So we will remove it from here. And we'll temporarily install it into this top one up here. Okay, next thing we need is a little short M4 screw and we'll put it in the center hole. Okay, so we've got this one in the center hole and this one in the top hole. Okay, now we can put the lever back on. Okay, so now we need to push the lever hard against that little stop and we need to hold the butterfly closed at the same time. Plus we also need to make sure that the spring is just as clearance. There yeah, you can see the spring just has clearance between the top of the screw. And we can tighten it up. Okay, so now the throttle is locked. It can't move. Okay, so it's locked against this little one here. And there's just enough clearance between them. You can see that tiny little air gap between the, the screw and the spring. Now we can remove this one again. Okay, and that's it. It's ready for installing as a drive-by-wire setup. Okay, so the next step is to set up the linkage once it's, once it's all uh, assembled. So the first thing I did is I just made sure that the throttles are... See, this one's closed, this one's open a little bit. They're progressively open further towards the back. So the back ones won't be holding it open we want to set the front ones first so you can see both sides progressively wider and wider as we get further back now the next thing I did is I set up these little drop links here the length of these so that these bottom ones here just hit the stop at the same time as the throttles just fully closed so you can hear it's just just hitting the stop there and this side's the same as this throttle's just fully closed. So that way, as these hit the stop, the throttles are, are fully closed at the front. Just spend a bit of time, get them as accurately from side to side as you can, because this will help later when you fire it up. So the next thing we do, oh, now I did all this with this, this front lever needs to be loose while we do that. So the next thing we'll do is we'll set the position of this. So now we can reach around at the back, we can push the actuator all the way forward like this so the actuator is bottoming out and then we can tighten up the, the front lever okay, now you'll see it it'll relax back again and that's exactly how it needs to be so now as the actuator hits the end of its travel at the back 
at exactly the same time the little levers hit the end of their travel at the front and the throttles are fully shut. So now we can go through and um, progressively set the throttles with all the adjusters here so that they all close at the same time. So start with these next two, get them just closing at the same time as the front ones, then move to the next one. So all three are closing at the same time. And then lastly, set the back ones. And if you set it all up like that, um, it should be pretty good once you fire it up. A couple of things to important things to notice is never adjust these ones and never loosen these ones. Yeah, so never adjust the, the position of these two outside levers and these two top ones here. Those should always stay the same. And when you come time to do the balancing from side to side at the front, only adjust one side. Don't ever adjust the other side, otherwise you'll end up possibly chasing your tail and you'll run out of travel with the actuator.